Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece of the puzzle to grow your business? Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, if you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's G O dot Angela Profit, two F's and two T's dot com and watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Today, I am super excited to talk with Christy Rice. Christy is the owner and founder of Momental Designs. Christy, welcome. Hello. Hello. How are you? Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. I'm super excited. <laughs> to tell our audience about all the cool stuff that you do and that you are doing. And so before we jump into all of that, for our audience, tell them a little bit about what you do, an overview. Okay, sure. So um, <clears throat> so I'm the owner and founder of Momental Designs. I am a stylist and author, and um, at the heart of it all, I am a painter. And so the work that we do at Momental um, is is a little different, and we and we kind of pride ourselves on that. So uh, we create completely bespoke stationery for our couples, which isn't terribly different from so many people who do the same thing. But we actually hand paint all of our pieces individually uh, at the end of it all. So our couples actually receive um, not to sound cliche, but they receive a little literally a little piece of artwork in the mail. Um, so we, uh, that's our thing. That's what we're all about. We're, you know, we're about connecting with our couples and literally allowing them the experience of commissioning a piece of artwork from us and working with us side by side, sometimes for well over a year to perfect and and bring this vision of theirs to life in, in paint and paper. And so, so cool. yeah, it's super unique. Like, so how did you get in? I, I mean, I'm assuming that you've always been in, like an artist and like, what, what was your background that led you into knowing, like, I really want to do art with weddings? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always, painted. I've always been an artist. My, you know, growing up, my, uh, my mom used to think that I was copying cartoons. Like I would draw Garfield and she would be like, literally when I was like six and seven years old, I'd be drawing Garf Garfield. And she's like, Oh honey, that's so nice. Did you use tracing paper? And I'm like, what's tracing paper, mom? You know? Aww. And so <clears throat> I've always, I've always been creating something for as long as I can literally remember. And, you know, specifically the weddings industry, I kind of fell into it. I have a very similar story to others. You know, I had my own wedding uh -huh. and I couldn't find anything I love. So I created my own um, and I did hand paint it. Uh, but what really 
happened, you know, after that moment, after my own wedding and after I realized I want to be my own boss and yada, yada, um, I looked out there and, you know, the internet, internet was still very young and I, I researched and, and at that time I didn't realize it was called benchmarking, but I was doing benchmark research and, you know, uh, I saw that there was very little, very, very little going on out there that involved fine art and there was nothing going on out there that involved actually hand painting individual pieces, individual finished products. So in my heart, like my spirit kind of leapt at that. And I was like, that's, that's me. That's where I'm going to enter the market and bring something really unique to the table. So in entrepreneur land, um, it sounds like we probably got started around the same time. I didn't even have internet. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I went to the library. Okay. Woo! That didn't exist when I, and it's like much less social media. That shit didn't exist. Yeah. I started nope. So tell us like your journey and getting started. Like since social media really didn't exist for either of us, like how did you get it? How'd you get the word out there to let people know what you were doing? Yeah. So that's a really great question. So <clears throat> I realized obviously, Hey, I, I need a website. And that was my, at that point, you know, so it's, you know, 2003 is basically when I started, um, uh, you know, seriously started, went to the courthouse kind of started and, yeah. and, and got this thing going. So, so yeah, I mean, the internet was, was moving and shaking and all that, but social media, no. So the website was the big push and learning about SEO and obviously search engine optimization at that point, you know, it was something that, you know, anybody could kind of get up to speed on rather quickly, but it took some dedication and some focus. So for me, that was the big thing. I built my own website. I am embarrassed to say I built my first website that I had for quite some time on, uh, I think it was called Microsoft Front Page. Uh, oh, girl, I remember that. <laughs> right? And so, uh, but I did all that, created this thing that I was super proud of that I cringe when I think about it now. And people started coming and coming and coming and I couldn't stop the flow. And so that was really how I got the word out was just, you know, playing around with, with, you know, just website descriptions and keywords. And, and, uh, I secured some top spots on Google's organic search way back when. And to this day I've held most of them. And so that's been, that's been really how I started getting the word out. That's amazing. Do you remember the flash websites? <laughs> oh, the flash website. <laughs> of course. And oh then my goodness. I'll rem I remember when like all the I uh, or the all the Apple stuff was launched and I'm like, shit, my <laughs> pretty website that cost me so much money doesn't work anymore. Like, yeah, good times. And good times. Like, yeah. And then it's like, then we had to rebuild everything on HTML and then there was a an app that came out where you could actually access the flash sites, but then like no one knew about, it. I don't know. It was just anyway, blast from the past. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes. Do yes. You remember, I mean, obviously you did um, your own stuff for your own wedding, but do you remember your very first client and how did that go? And what's changed from like the very first client or the, you know, the first huh. clients that you work with, you know, fast forward all these years, like with your clients now in terms of like expectations, communications, like what have you seen evolve over the years? Oh my goodness. That is actually going to be really hysterical to answer that question. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my very first client, now this client was before, you know, I went to the courthouse and made it legit but still was my very first client. It uh, was a local gal. And that, you know, that was probably the most interesting part of it is that a lot of my initial clients uh, were local, you know, to my hometown at that stage. And so I went to her house and met with her personally face to face. And there was no email communication with her. 
And every time I created a sample or a prototype or whatever you want to call it, I went to her house and I showed it to her. Oh and my God. I kid you not. And so, um, you know, I think though that right there is, is kind of the, the, is still very alive and well, that high touch, uh, approach to the client experience is still very much what we try to, to, to accomplish, but obviously in a much more efficient and a much more modern way. So, but yes, that first client was, was pretty, um, is about, a, a, about as inefficient as you could possibly get to be quite <laughs> honest. Um, but, but, and so things have changed a lot and I no longer design my own website and, uh, you know, we, we Skype with our clients to, to give them that high touch experience. And so all the obvious things have changed. So, yes. So what is your, um, delivery process now? Like, from the time that you talk to a client, like walk mm-hmm. us through what that looks like for, you know, the perfect client and sure. how long should someone expect to be working with you? Well, you know, that's a great question because I think that even, even in this climate where we have access to everything at the drop of a hat and everything is so incredibly convenient couples will come to us, you know, they're interested in our services, but they're still saying to us um, fairly often, well, how does this work? You know, we live in California and you're in Pennsylvania, (laughs) you know, how does this work? (laughs) And so, you know, it it is still something that we have to address with our couples, but um, our entire process is designed to kind of fall into place beautifully and, and effortless, effortlessly, uh, through email, phone conversation, and 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 really, it's it's not just designed to function; it's designed to flourish in that process. So I love that, <laughs> yes, we want to flourish. We don't want to just get by. So, um, you know, we want our couples to feel like their process is effortless, even though our process is very. Um, it, and times it's intense for our couples because there's a lot that goes into it. They have the, the freedom and flexibility to be involved in a lot of the decisions that need to be made, but still just the same. We want them to feel like it's joyful and it's delightful and not very heavy and, and labor intensive. Um, so <clears throat> goodness gracious, did I even answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> You, you, I mean, our, us creatives, like we love to just, you know, talk and talk. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, I, yes. Well, and I was just saying like, well, so how long, like as a planner, you know, I really try to educate my clients before I send them yes. over to someone when they're expecting, you know, a super unique experience. But I like to set the expectation to say, okay, like I want you to think about these three things and we need to um, give Christy X amount of time. So what would be the lead time, I guess like the most time you prefer to work with someone and then also like the least time? Right, right. Well, here's the thing, you know, we just, we see it all, but I think our sweet spot honestly would be about six months before the event. However, we work, a lot of our couples, we're working with them a year plus out. Um, But what happens in that scenario where they have a year or more until they're actually, until their mail date for their invitations is that they tend to get kind of lost in all the decision making. Um, And that's something that we really try to avoid for our couples because it it becomes incredibly, uh, you know, just frustrating for the couple to just constantly second guess themselves, constantly change their mind. And, and they're doing all of that simply because they have the time to. So, you know, <laughs> that's, you that? <laughs> <laughs> so that six to eight month mark is, is a super really comfortable place for people to be. Um, <clears throat> in terms of what our couples should be thinking about before they begin a process with us, 
we always tell them, look, we're not expecting you to come to us with all the answers. In fact, we prefer you don't um, because that's what right. we're here for. And that's what you're hiring us for. And that's what we're partnering for. But, you know, obviously to take a spin through our website, our website is um, really robust in terms of the search function. And you can do a filtered search based, based on color, based on location, based on, you know, overall aesthetic. And so we, you know, ask our couples to take a spin through the website, uh, take note of anything that catches their eye for any reason, and then bring that to the table so we can discuss it and really kind of sink our teeth into it. So how do you, in terms of like all the different color palettes and how you choose what to say, do you use any type of methodology or how do you do you play off of their wedding colors how do you come mm. up with that well there's a lot of different ways we really like the couple to kind of lead that conversation so more and more we're actually seeing less of a reliance on color palette as the years go by color oh, cool. obviously comes into play uh, but what we're seeing more couples really focusing on and really getting excited about as the inspiration base for their stationary experience is really some type of story, whether it be their connection to the venue, whether it be some type of family heirloom that's inspiring the artwork on the invitation itself. Um, so it's becoming less and less and less about color. Um, a lot of our couples are just saying to me, we don't really have a color palette, a lot of neutrals or, you know, this is, these are the colors that I've given the florist, but I, I don't really need you to stick to them. I just kind of want to have a really soft, uh, low contrast feel. So color isn't as important as, as kind of the couples creating an experience for their guests on paper. So, and that experience usually draws from some aspect of their love story, some aspect of their heritage. Uh, so, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. So, have you ever had a couple that had you do a, a thank you note for every single guest that they wanted to hand deliver to them at the wedding reception during dinner? Yes, we have. Um, really? It doesn't happen often. You know, our couples, I, I, I don't say this just to, to say it, but our couples are some of the most creative that I've run into, to be yeah. quite honest. Um, they have really big ideas, and we encourage that too. So, you know, we say to them, like, we want to hear your crazy ideas. We want to hear the ideas that you think are impossible or are cost prohibitive or whatever the case may be, we want to hear them because if we can make them happen and they're going to be amazing, let's do this. So yes, we've had couples do some really interesting things. Um, yes. Creating, That's you know, awesome. custom, custom thank you um, pieces for each, each guest has been something that's happened. Um, you know, so we really, really, really want to indulge our couples in those quote unquote crazy ideas. Well, I mean, in 16 years, I had never had anyone do that until this past week. And no. she, so we always make a list for our clients, you know, especially we go through it like 50 million times, like the week before the wedding, we're like, okay, we just want to make sure that we have everything that you need to give us the week before the wedding. And, um, she like just says, oh, and by the way, I will have a baggie that has... <laughs> handmade and handwritten letters to each of the guests at each of the tables. And if you could just put those on the tables and then during dinner, because they had their private dinner prior to the, the dinner. Okay. Um, gotcha. Like we're going to eat beforehand. And I always suggest that. And then as dinner's going on, so they had stations. So we had this all strategically laid out on paper. It's like, okay, we'll start with this table number because they did have a seating chart and they'll have the salad served at the table, and then we'll invite by table, and then they'll go around, and they'll spend 3.2 minutes <laughs> with every table, and, <laughs> and like, we literally had it planned out like that, and then as they went to each table, they made sure that each guest had a letter, and a lot of the guests, I guess she went back through her whole lifetime and found mm. pictures 
with her and that guest and then the groom did it too. And so um, I, I just looked at the groom. I'm like, did you really like this? And he's like, well, my goal was to do eight a day for X amount of days. Oh, my goodness. And like, but it was really cool. And throughout the whole wedding, and I I'd actually talked to her parents last night. They were like, you know, people commented on that. I'm like, I'm going to have to be honest with you. When she told me she did that, I'm like, girlfriend, you got too much time on your hands. Like, that's crazy. I've never had anyone do that. <laughs> However, it was like the sweetest, most thoughtful mm -hmm. touch and everyone was from out of town. And so uh, she wanted them to know like how appreciative that she was that they traveled so far, um, which kind of leads me into my next question. So how do you, I mean, do your clients, I know you said you started very local, but are most of your clients out of town and do you do a lot of destination wedding things? Oh, goodness. Yes. So only about, and it really fluctuates. It's under about 1% right now of couples that are local to wow. us. Yeah. So, uh, and that is something that we let our prospective couples know as well to really reassure them that, look, we've actually, you know, put a lot of thought into this process and it is going to work for you beautifully from afar. Uh, so, uh, yes. So we work with couples literally all over the world and it's not just here and there. It's every single day. Um, uh, we ship internationally at least three times a week mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, our couples are just here, there and everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. destination weddings, my goodness, we, we, you know, everything obviously comes in cycles. The, the designs that our couples love seem to cycle and trend. And so we were laughing the other day saying that we should just change our tagline to momental designs. We do really, really beautiful Italy wedding invitations. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because in the last year we have just our Italian inspired Amalfi, um, you know, now Lake Como is, is the place to be. It's hit the mainstream, yeah. um, have just exploded. And so it's like every third order that we're shipping is for, for an Italian wedding. So, um, you know, that makes yeah. me think though, when I've been to Italy, when I've worked in Italy, they have such a educational and appreciation for art mm -hmm. where I feel like in uh america <laughs> like unless you're around that artsy community and you grow up around that mm -hmm. or your parents are in art there's not like that much of appreciation un unless you're surrounded by that and yes in italy i feel like there's just appreciation for art kind of like everywhere you go yeah you're um, immersed in it for yeah. sure and i think even the american couples that are you know, cause that's who we're working with mostly the American couples that are going to Italy for their event gotcha. as a true destination, but their, their planner often is based in Italy and their planners oh. tend to be obviously really encouraging that uh, highly artistic aesthetic for their couples. So, yeah. um, and then, you know, again, we've, we've kind of monopolized you know, the Google search image search for, you know, Italy wedding invitations. You type it, you type in Italy wedding and we're coming up in, you know, the image search. So, that's um, amazing. I think, you know, obviously that's helped things too. So, um, but yes, yeah. we really, uh, our, our business model is not a local model whatsoever. Gotcha. And so I'm looking like my next just question is I feel like what you're already doing is so special and so unique for what you all are providing. But in looking at all of your work and you guys, you have to check out our Instagram. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and I mean, I see an overall theme in terms of like mm -hmm. what's unique and what's special. And so a two, two full questions. So one mm -hmm. is, do you have a certain type of thing that is your favorite to paint? Because I obviously see a lot of florals. Mm -hmm. And then the second question I have is, do people bring you inspirational things or pieces? Like I see scarves and wallpaper and like, do you like that? Or do you like to just start from scratch? <laughs> sure. And that's a great question. So uh, me personally, uh, I obviously, I love floral. 
and that's my jam. And so you're going to see a lot of floral, especially on Instagram, because, you know, that's where we post kind of what we're most excited about. Now, I do have a team of seven people full time. So one of those team members is a fine artist as well. And she does contribute tremendously to the, the illustrations that we do for our couples. And, and she is kind of the exact opposite of me in a beautiful way. So she does landscapes and detailed architecture and portraits and all that kind of stuff. So when you come to us, and that is a decision I made many, many years ago that I, you know, I wanted to grow momental. I wanted to make it, uh, you know, something that could reap more couples and I realized that I needed to bring on another artist that could really help me do that and so when you come to us you can know that you're not just gonna you're not just a one-trick pony here um, and we pride ourselves on we work in a lot of different mediums we work in a lot of different painting styles so when our couples come to us one of the questions that they get asked is okay well what kind of style what kind of style of artwork do you want to see do you want to see, you know, graphite? Do you want to see pen and ink? Do you want to see super detailed watercolor? Do you want to see acrylic? So um, when I say we're fine artists, we are fine artists. Yeah. And so we can really give them what exactly what they're looking for. Um, and I think that's something different too <clears throat> from a lot of brands out there. And I know a lot of uh, new businesses, especially, you know, you're told to kind of have one style and be really hyper-focused on that style. And your Instagram should be incredibly sleek in that way. Um, and not to get too much into business advice, but we, we've kind of turned from that a little bit. And we see ourselves um, as a place where you can come and learn about all the different styles of art that exist and work with us closely to find the style that best suits you. So when you go on our Instagram feed, you're going to see that it's a little bit of everything. And, um, I'm not, it's not chaotic and our brand isn't chaotic, but we really pride ourselves in giving you, um, a lot of options when it comes to style and, and our couples love that. And they come to us, as you had asked, what do they come to us with? And yeah. we love, we love inspiration. Um, some of our couples come to us, you know, we're, um, we're actually working on a project right now and it's for a good old fashioned debutante ball in, in, in Texas. And, you know, she sent us this beautiful, the mother sent us this beautiful charm is the Greek evil eye. And she loved this charm and she wanted us to kind of be inspired by the color and the texture and that charm. So that's a great example. You know, our couples will go as far as to send us an actual piece that they are inspired by. They'll send it to us in the mail or, you know, uh, just a Pinterest board full of, of what they're excited about. Um, or sometimes it's a, you know, we will, which I think is lovely given that, you know, our process is done via email and Skype and all that. Sometimes we'll get little boxes full of goodies in the mail with, you know, clippings from a gown or, a certain piece of lace or, you know, whatever it may be. And, and that's really actually, we cherish that from our couples that they want to send us actual pieces, actual real elements that they're inspired by and that they want us to be inspired by when we're creating for them. That's awesome. I love that. And so I was like popping around on your YouTube because I noticed mm. that you some classes and workshops yes. and videos. And so tell us about that. Well, that is a whole other aspect <laughs> of, of what I do. And I, you know, I laugh because people, you know, you're supposed to have that 30 second elevator pitch of what you do. Uh -huh, that's and awesome. that is so <laughs> unbelievably difficult for me because, um, well, Long story short, in 2014, my business, you know, was rocking and rolling. And um, I had, you know, we began in 2003 and I had no life for a very long time. And I tried to do it all, even though I had employees. And in 2014, I tell this story, my husband gifted me with a trip to Italy. And he was like, we're going to go and we're going to do it right. And we're going to go for three weeks. And I promise this makes sense to what you just asked me. And <laughs> I said, okay, okay, okay honey, 
I'm like, honey, I cannot go to Italy for three weeks. Are you right. kidding me? I have couples. I have employees. And so I had to make the decision for the good of my marriage, literally, to find a way to leave and disconnect from my business for three weeks. And so I did, long story short. And it actually revolutionized my business. And it allowed me, and here's where I connect with your question, yeah. to when I came back, my team said, you know what? We're good. We like this new process. We don't need you to help us anymore. <laughs> don't you love that? <clears throat> yeah. And so it then allowed me to figure out what do I want to do next? What do I want to do personally? How do I want to develop my own fine art? And so that launched me into a whole other aspect of my brand where um, I try to, I, I want to teach people. I want to teach people how to paint beginners, intermediate, advanced. Uh, and so that is a lot of what my YouTube is about. It's just helping people understand watercolor. I find there to be such a visceral joy in watercolor and just the act of putting a brush to paper. Even if you've never ever lifted a brush up before, something really magical happens when you touch watercolor to the page. And I really am passionate about teaching people that experience and getting them to be able to relive that experience for themselves um, as a way to kind of harness joy in their lives. And uh, so on top of that, I've written a couple books, illustrated a couple books to help people yeah. on their watercolor journey. So we have the Painterly Days series, and then we have the Christie's Cutting Garden series. And uh, I have another book coming out in spring of 2019. It's called The Art for Joy Sake Journal. That's amazing. And, so what uh, is this one about? The, like your new one coming up? Yes. My new one is, um, it's about, you know, taking all the lessons that I've taught in the first two books, which were, you know, watercoloring books where people could actually paint directly in the books on illustrations that I provided. And then I gave them a little bit of art lessons kind of intertwined in those books. So the Art for Joy Sake Journal is the next step in the journey and it's helping people understand the creative process. It's helping people try to kind of um, enliven their own life with a creative journey of some sort. Uh, so there's um, a bunch of different creative prompts in the journal, you know, where I encourage people, for example, one of the creative prompts is to go outside, take a five or 10 minute walk and pick mm -hmm. up the first five natural things that you see, a beautiful stone, an interesting, um, you know, stick that had fallen from a tree, a beautiful leaf, a flower, pick those things up, take them inside, sit down and, and draw them. Don't worry about your skill level. Don't worry about what it's going to look like, but draw them. So, uh, I, I have a lot of different creative, uh, little projects in there for people to, to, you know, indulge in, even if they're a beginner and have never done any of this before. Um, there are still some watercoloring pages in there so people can just paint on illustrations that I provide for them. They don't have to worry about drawing. Um, I have two sections in the book where people can throw a creative get together for their friends, uh, That's kind of a pa cute. painting party. Yes. So, um, there's a lot of fun stuff in there. So, um, uh, and the book is really designed for folks who, who have no clue when it comes to being artistic and but have a lot of curiosity. And so, yeah. So are they more, it, I, I feel like you um, really focus on like the fun stuff and the beautiful stuff. Yes. And, then, you know, which is honestly, let's come on for us creatives. That's all we want to do. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, we don't want to do the business side, but do you ever find people saying like, how do you do the business side of it, Christy? Like, I mean, <laughs> beautiful stuff is great, but yeah. how did you get there? And how did you say, okay, this, I am getting my business license and I am making this a business. And who did you surround yourself with? Because mm -hmm. I know as a creative, if I didn't have the people who are non-creative to like help run the business, I wouldn't have a business. So how did you find right. that part of being an entrepreneur? Um, for me, that was a big struggle. And I'll be quite honest, you know, when I started my business Momental, I, I had not a clue, um, like so many. And the, the, the real difficult part of it, not only did I not have a clue, but I also felt like I could do it all myself. And I felt like I was uh, perfectly fine being an island, so to speak. 
Uh, I did not network. I did not feel that I needed to get out there. It, the culture is so different now. Yeah. Um, you know, 15 years later, it is so, so, and I, I, I'm fine dating myself. I, it's okay. Um, you know, <laughs> we have it's, experience. It's, yes. Good. But it is so incredibly different. I mean, now you, you, you hop on Instagram and you're instantly starting to build a community of like-minded, you know, business owners or like-minded creatives. Um, and in 2003, it was incredibly different and you had to physically go somewhere and go to a networking event. And I was a very shy person. So, um, I think that, you know, my business growth could have been a lot quicker, a lot faster, a lot more exciting if I had been a little, had a little bit of a different personality. So my learning curve was quite long. Let's say that. Okay. Because I had to make a lot of mistakes. I had to see I had to see slow growth and realize that's not what I wanted in the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I had to learn how to take bigger leaps rather than baby steps. Um, so I have I have a very unique entrepreneurial spirit. It's it's not the typical risk-taking, fast-moving um, spirit that you think of when you first think of an entrepreneur. But um, now I will say this, I've learned to be, I've learned to be a risk-taker and I obviously wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be working on my 10th book with the same publisher right, right now if I hadn't, or I wouldn't have a, a team of amazing women if I hadn't learned how to take risks. But um, I was a slow learner. <laughs> yeah. Well, and a lot of us that, again, in the creative industry, when you start out, it's like, no one's ever going to do it the way I do it. Like, mm -hmm. how could I ever even trust someone else? Um, sure. I feel like we all go through that and we all struggle with that unless we are raised by entrepreneurial parents and at a very young age, it's like impounded Correct. into your head, which I don't ever really find that to be normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, cause, because you, it's like your baby and yeah. you still, I mean, all these years later, I still cannot disconnect myself completely from something because it truly is my baby. Um, speaking yes. of babies, I saw that you had a little one. <laughs> so do you want to share a little bit about that? And oh gosh. Balance like your baby, you know, as your business. And obviously, like you said, you have learn to trust others and empower others yes. and surround yourself with those people that can help elevate. And for those of you listening, like you're going to go through some people that it's like, you think everything's perfect. I mean, it happened to me even recently for a good five, six years and then shit blows up and it's like, I don't want to trust anybody anymore. I mean, you're going to go through those yeah. life cycles. Um, you know, people come and people go and it really, really, really upset me. And I was talking to a therapist friend of mine and he's like, you know, mm. it's like people are uh, like trees, Angela. He's like, they, you have the roots and you've got the branches and you've got the leaves and some are going to grow and some are going to fall off. And he's like, that's okay. You can't always have the same people in your life because if you had that, you wouldn't grow. And um, right. I'm like, oh, okay. So that, that makes me feel better. <laughs> Um, that's but, really good advice. That's yeah, really good advice. I mean, actually. it's, it's really good because, you know, no matter where you are, or what country you're in, you know, usually there's trees everywhere. So mm -hmm. it, it really, you know, can resonate. Um, which this is before we go into like the baby and the mom and how you balance yes. the business. I did have a quick question. Do you do, um, do you, do you write in different languages at all? Or is um, it just art? So for our, do I write do, in terms of the invitations? Do yeah, we? yeah. 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 Okay. We can do anything at all. Perfect. So okay. as long as our couples can send us a PDF of what cool. we're supposed to be getting on the invitation, we can gotcha. do it. You yes. may not know what the hell it's saying. But exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So yes. how do you balance the mom world and the business world? Oh my goodness. Honestly, I, you know, I don't have a magical answer to that except that I have a really good support system. Um, you know, many years ago, my husband and I made the decision. We used to live in uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. It's a commuter town just outside of New York City. 
and we made the decision well before we had you know decided to to build a family uh, to move home we wanted to be near our family we're, we're homebodies we've always been um, and so now that is really uh, paying off in terms of we have this beautiful little situation with our um, with my parents and, and, you know, my mom comes to the house every day and watches my son and oh my loves every minute of it. And then I can go off to the studio and do what I need to do. And, um, you know, some weeks I, I very honestly work part time and I, I do what I need to do when I come home and I'm with my son. And so, um, but it's not magic. It's just very good fortune. Uh, that that we have the situation that we do. Um, in terms of balance, though, that was more of a mental thing for me. Um, our son, you know, we did not decide to build a family until I was thirty-seven, okay. and so, <laughs> uh huh, and so I was very concerned about what that was going to look like, how I was going to be. Would I be a good mom? Would I, you know, still care about my business? Would I, you know, all the, all the silly questions that we ask ourselves, you know? And so the balance thing was more mental for me in that I, something shifted in me when he came along and our, our son's adopted. Um, and so, and you know, there are all the emotions that come with that and, uh, you know, but something shifted in me and it's hard to explain how, but having that little soul come into my life and be placed in my arms, it really just self-corrected me in terms of what is truly important. And all, all of the sudden, I became very, very um, shrewd in terms of what I was going to give my time to. Mm -hmm. And and that is, has been such a gift. And I don't know how to tell you to get there. I don't, I'm not going to, you know, assume that, you know, okay, well, go have a baby and all your perspectives will be just aligned perfectly. No. <laughs> so I said, we should have a baby. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying for me, it was, it was almost instant. And I had such clarity you know, um, and so I am so grateful for that because for a lot of my career, I just did yes to everything. Yeah. Um, I think out of fear, out of a fear of staying relevant, um, out of fear of having enough. And so when Isaac came along, it became very clear to me what I should say yes to, what I should say no to, and and how I should build my days. And so, yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like it, it is an age slash experience type thing where when we're really young and your, your motivation, it's a different type of motivation mm -hmm. to, it's like, you just say, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, some days I'm like, God, I wish that I had this guidance as a young entrepreneur where someone taught mm -hmm. me how to pre-qualify and the questions to ask, which, I mean, I did have mentors. I mean, at that time I went through score in the library because it was free. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's like, I didn't understand investing in myself and you know, you, but you kind of have to go through it as a young entrepreneur and like learn like, okay, I love doing this. I hate doing this. Sure. And then the older we get, you know, life happens and shit happens. And you know, some mm -hmm. of the, I feel like, the people around me, they're like, oh my God, it's so sad that your dad passed of cancer. And oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it's so sad that so-and-so's sick in your family. And it's like, you know, you can look at it that way, but honestly, as a family, we see it as a blessing where mm -hmm. you really start to assess your time. And yes. that's why every time I speak, I usually start and end with about time and teaching people not only to track their time so they mm -hmm. know what they're worth, and when you're young and you don't have a ton of responsibility as a business owner, you can do a lot of things to figure yes. shit out. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay. And then when you get older, your priorities are going to change and they're going to shift. And as happy as it seems being around babies, like it is um, for me, I'm just like, oh my God, it just, if you can't talk to me, I just don't want to be around you. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> 
conversation. Like I'm not a good baby person. That's how I like it. <laughs> um, gotcha. But I love the young children who like come and observe and they intern. And I mean, literally like there was a, um, it was called big picture high school and these, and now kids go to high school in like the seventh grade, which I think is weird. That was middle school Mm. when I was in school Mm -hmm. and it's the smaller like magnet type schools, but like seventh through 12th grade, they like rotate and they go out into the real world and they see like real stuff. And it's like, That's amazing. Like that is brilliant. Whoever came up with that school model because kids can really see the real picture. It's like you can study stuff and, but when you actually start to put it in place and you work in the real world, it's completely different. Yes. So, um, for you, you know, it's so sweet to hear like, you know, Isaac like really centered you, but you know, for those of you who don't have babies or don't want to have babies, like, yeah, um, yeah. You know, there are things that could happen in your life, good, or, you know, some people perceive them as bad. But again, it's like, take it in and it's like, okay, we can't change the situation. There's a much bigger power in charge. Mm -hmm. And what do you have in your life that where you need to assess your time? And sometimes it's good to say no and say it's not a good fit. And you know, even yesterday, I, someone emailed me, and I've done a lot of clients that this this person works with, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, my sister just got engaged, and we're gonna try to put together something for Thanksgiving weekend, but mm. I don't know what your family plans are." And I mean, we I have a family now of a bunch of entrepreneurs, so we're all pretty mm-hmm. flexible. Yeah. You know, so if I really wanted to do that, that's fine. But I know a lot of people travel. And it's great that I do have a team. You know, we do love our teams, right, Christy? Absolutely. (laughs) Because I can say like, yes, my company can help you. I'm not going to be in town, but my team, there's someone on my team that will be here um, most likely that can help you. Or, you know, you always had the luxury to say, you know, we're booked. We're all going to be with our families and, Mm -hmm. you know, I wish you the best of luck. And, but when you're working for other people, you can't really do that. You can't really pick and choose. So there are definitely pros and cons. Um, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you've had in this industry and how have you overcome it? Mm. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Well, I would say, (laughs) wow. Um, I would say, and honestly, in the last year, or so this industry has, and we all know it, this industry has changed dramatically. Uh Um, and the change is at times it's a little, it's a little disconcerting. It's a little, it's dizzying. Um, and we all know the obvious reasons, you know, with the different media outlets shuttering or, you know, drastically changing the way that they're functioning. And just with the way that our couples are, are, making their buying decisions and, and trying to keep up with that. You know, we've, we've kind of evolved into this experiential economy where our couples are really placing a lot of focus and attention on different aspects of their buying experience than they have in the past, you know? Uh, So how do we stay relevant? How that has become, that has been a, a challenge. How do we stay top of mind? in a very crowded culture, a very crowded industry, even specifically in the stationary industry. Um, now, luckily, our brand and the way that we do things and the work that we put out there, our, our work is extremely experiential. And we're not only creating a, a design experience for our couples, but we're helping them create an experience for their guests from the moment you know they tear open that envelope. But I think that is been the biggest challenge that I've seen across the last 15 years, um, you know, is, is just with the economy changing, the way people spending their money in events changing, how do we, how do we make sure that we still fit into that and that we're still relevant? And, um, I think for us, the biggest way that we've combated it and overcome it is just to really be mindful of where our couples, where their heads are at and where their priorities are at and how priorities have shifted and to really speak to that in every way, not just in the actual conversations, but speak to that, you know, in the way that we uh, create website copy in the way that we 
post on Instagram and what we show um, on our Facebook page. You know, it all leads back to the fact that we know our couples now really want to create an experience for their guests. And so, yeah, that's, that's something that was a big challenge and I think will continue to be. And it's something that, that we are, that we work on and we work to, and we speak to on a daily basis. Yeah. I really, this has actually been over the past 24 months. Um, this has probably been my favorite, uh, just past year or so because people are, like you said, they're so focused on the experience for their guests. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who actually love creating new experiences and different things and, you know, not all business owners are like that. They Mm -hmm. really get into a comfortable place, which is fine. Um, and their, their revenue is comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. But then you have those of us that, I mean, I'm an overachiever all the way and I'm like, yes, we get bored. (laughs) And then I'm like, okay, every year we got to do something different because I just get so stinking bored. And then it's just, it's not fair to the clients. It's not fair Mm -hmm. to the company. And so it's like, okay, what are we going to do this year? And so it, it has definitely been my favorite time. And it's funny because a lot of people, they have this misconception of, you know, the millennials and it's like, oh, they just have it so easy because it, mm. they have social media. And, and it's like, you know, in teaching millennials, and I don't know if you found this when you're teaching too, mm-hmm. they, d- I mean, they know how to play on their phone. I don't mean that about a way, um, but they really, mm-hmm. they have to be taught also as an entrepreneur how to have strategy, how to do social media and, and monetize it because they mm-hmm. do know how to play on it. And so it, I kind of get like defensive in their defense when people, when I'm in these conferences, you know, 50, 60, 70, 70 year old corporate people. And they're like, these millennials. I'm like, you guys, <laughs> you, you, you got it all wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, they still need guidance. In fact, right now for them, as a new business owner, as a young new business, it is harder because there are so many overwhelming options where mm-hmm. when we started, we didn't have a lot of options. It's like, oh my God, True. I have an email address now. And yep. oh my God, I, I am figuring out how to use front page. And now it's like, you've got, <laughs> all, I mean, it's like, which, which self-guided platform and YouTube video do you go to? Because it's incredibly noisy. And yes. so I just, um, you know, for those of you out there who are listening, who are new business owners, please know that like we do not, or at least I don't, like, I don't think that you right. just like got it all easy because you don't, you know, you know, really, there are still challenges. They're different Absolutely. From what we had 15, 16 years ago, but it's like embrace it. And I, I'm like, so Oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm living in the right era. <laughs> because, you know, we have all this tech stuff, which, you know, is amazing. Um, yes. So as we close it out, Christy, like tell our listeners where they can like just learn more about you and what you do. Cause I know you have two different websites. So if you'll share both of those with us. Sure, sure. So yeah, you can find us of course at momentaldesigns.com. It's the word moment with an A-L on the end. It's always mispronounced. Um, but momentaldesigns.com and just dive in. That's where all of the stationary pieces are. And there's just years and years of archives of our work and our new stuff and blog and all that good, good fun stuff. And you can find us at christyrice.com. And that is more of a fun place to shop. Um, watercolor wallpaper, fabric, uh, handmade to note cards, um, journals, uh, anything you can imagine. And we just relaunched our, our silk scarves. So that's oh fun. Gosh. Yeah. And um, you can purchase all of our books there. And we actually will have um, a special deal for listeners for um, purchasing the painter's wedding. So um, that'll be fun. And uh, of course, on Instagram, I'm there every day, uh, most of the day. And so at Momental um, or Christy the Painter. So you can find us in either place. Awesome. So guys, if you heard that, if you are listening and you hear this podcast and you reach out to Christy or you have a client for Christy, be sure that you tell her that you heard her on <laughs> Weddings and Sales. 
Um, and then I know you mentioned your new book. And so yes. where can listeners... Uh, find more out about it? Do you have a pre-release? Like I know you said March, 2019, like where can people get it? So actually um, the painter's wedding is, is available now. Oh. Um, yes. <laughs> so the, yes, the painter's wedding. I know it's really, it's, it's a embarrassment of riches um, with my <laughs> books, uh, literally. Um, so I have a new book coming out in March of 2019. So, gotcha. but the, yeah. <laughs> the awesome. painter's wedding is, is out now. Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, everywhere books are sold. Um, and you can also, uh, get a copy on christyrice.com. And if you do head to Amazon, it's a great place to get acquainted with all of my books. Um, there, are, um, there are eight right now, soon to be nine. And so, uh, you can check them all out there. If you just search Christy Rice on Amazon. So. That's amazing. And then do you do online classes or are all of your classes in person? So I do right now I have a course, uh, a watercolor beginner course with craftsy.com. Okay, so um, how and do you spell that? So if anybody wants to take it. Yes. It's the word craft with an S Y on the end. So you're craftsy. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So, um, so you can just search my name on craftsy. They have a subscription option where you can, you know, pay a certain monthly fee and have access to any class that you'd like, or you can purchase individual classes. Um, but honestly, my YouTube channel is fantastic because it's free and there are a ton of videos on there, um, where I dive into watercolor in all different ways. I paint in my watercolor books on there. I um, do specific, you know, how to paint a strawberry and how to paint, you know, <laughs> a tulip and things like that. So um, definitely head to YouTube. That's super fun. Um, you know, I've been doing, uh, this year's been really fun for me with podcasts and I've got really different content on every podcast that I do. So you can check those out. I mean, there's a lot of ways to, to um, get involved in the education that I provide. And depending on the year, I, I do speak at conferences. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's where amazing. I'm at. So are you going to be heading to a wedding MBA soon? You know, I, I'm not sure. I haven't made that decision yet. So I, I guard my travel time really closely, yeah. if you could, could imagine. So um, I had a very, very, very heavy travel year this year. So, yeah. um, still, still thinking on that. Yeah. Maybe TSE. <laughs> maybe, maybe, so maybe I'll be at both. So if you're All right. here, we have to hook up. <laughs> yes. And guys, just one more time. If you purchase the painter's <laughs> wedding on christyrice.com, you will receive a complimentary art print of your choice. So be sure to check that out yes. on christyrice.com. And Christy, thank you so much for sharing. Oh gosh. Thank, thank you. you. You are so welcome. It was awesome talking with you today. And yes. for all of you listening out there, be sure to check out christyrice.com. And out of all of your platforms, I love your YouTube channel because I love education. Check out the Thank free videos. You. And definitely <laughs> check out her work on Instagram. So I hope that all of you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for listening to Weddings Unveiled. And be sure to catch us on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye, y'all. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.